Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a brief review, show you some swatches, and a mini tutorial on this look using three products from the Too Faced Too Femme collection. This was just released at the very end of December. I think I snagged it right on January 1st with some Christmas money. I was so excited when I saw it came out and then immediately the eyeshadow palette was sold out on Too Faced website. And I thought, oh my word, it must be fantastic. So when it showed up on Ulta's website, I quick bought it. And now it's currently out of stock on there as well, but it is in stock on Sephora. So I thought, okay, I've really got to test this out because it must be amazing. So I'm gonna break up this video into three parts. Up front, I'm just gonna give you the basics, the information about each product that I purchased, the weight, I'll show you some swatches, and then I will go into the mini tutorial. I'll show the palette, the blush, and the hardcore lipstick in action. And then stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give you my thoughts as I have used this palette and these products numerous times. I feel like there is some important information you need to know. If you're new here, be sure you hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. All right, we're gonna start off with eyeshadow. You knew I was gonna start there because that is the item that first caught my eye. So here's the outer packaging. It is exactly like what the inner packaging is. This is the first time that I'm aware of in a long time that Too Faced has done the hard car cardboard packaging on their eyeshadow palette. It has butterflies, they're raised, it's really beautiful. And then on the inside, there are 14 shades and this might look familiar as far as the size of these pans and you would be right because the teddy bear palette is the exact same layout now i just did some quick math and looked at the back and the tiny little print though um you'll remember the criticism on this was that these pans were so small and people were complaining that there was so little product and i told you in my review read the fill weight because that tells you actually there were 14, like 14.5 grams in this palette. So there wasn't actually that much less product than in their normal palettes. However, this one, the total fill weight is 9.2 grams. So you are getting quite a bit less, but overall beautiful color spectrum. I'll pop on the screen some swatches and you will see the color range in here is really pretty. And I think what drew me to this palette, this collection, is because it does have that feminine, girly flair to it. It looks very spring-like. I think the names on all of the shadows are really cute. So overall, I love the packaging, the color story, but make sure you hang with me. So before we talk about formulation, let's go on to the next product, and that is the blush. So again, the outside packaging mimics what's on the inside. Cardboard packaging does have a mirror. And here's what this looks like. This is called Butterfly Babe. And if you look real close, you'll see that it does have embossing on here. Now, all of that embossing had gold fleck overspray. That drives me nuts. So you can bet when I first got this, I was really having to wipe away a good couple layers to get all of that gold sparkle off because it's really just flecks of glitter and I didn't want those on my cheeks. Once you get past that layer, there are no chunks of gold glitter in the base formulation of this blush. Now, as you see me apply this, I'll talk a little bit more about the color, but let me just show you kind of a finger swatch and a swatch on the back of my hand so you can kind of see how it looks in a full-on swatch. Obviously, we don't wear blush quite this strong, but here's the color. It's kind of a, it's a little deceiving. It looks more cool tone in some lights and more warm tone in other lights. Again, I'll talk more about this as I apply it, but it does have a lot of glow. Keep that in mind. And then the last product that I ordered was one of the new Hardcore lipsticks. I think they hit it out of the park with the packaging as they normally do. So here's the outer packaging, which has all the butterflies, but the inner packaging, they made it a heart-shaped tube. 
It's very weighty, even though it's plastic, it has a good weight to it, gold on the end and on the part that pulls out. And then you'll see on the inside, they mimicked, they carried that heart shape to the inner core of this lipstick. And what that core is, is that is a shea butter core. So these are very hydrating lipsticks. And as you'll see in a moment, I apply this with no lip liner or anything, and you'll be able to see how much color payoff these really do have. All right, let me show you also a hand swatch of that lipstick color. The shade I picked was Never Grow Up, and there are several shades available. And I feel like this one is a pink tone. It has some neutrality to it, but it does come off pink. It is what I'm wearing on my lips but I think it's a really pretty kind of getting close to spring shade. And as far as the scent on this, I love it. It is a kind of tart, fruity scent. It's not quite as sweet as like a Starburst, if you know that candy, but I would say maybe skittly or tart cherry maybe. It's really yummy, I think. And once you apply it to your lips, you don't, that scent doesn't linger. It's not super overpowering, but I find it a very pleasant scent. As far as the scent on the rest of the products, personally, I mean, I've had my nose in these products trying to see if I could detect anything. Definitely nothing on the blush. And the eyeshadow palette, I mean, initially when you open it, there's like some kind of a, I don't know, almost like an herbally, herbally scent. Somebody described it as old flowers. And I don't, I don't know that I pick that up, but I, once the palette is open for a little bit of time, I really don't smell that. So honestly, even as I'm applying it, I am not picking up any scent. So if you're familiar with the chocolate bar palettes from Too Faced or any of their gingerbread spicy ones. It is nowhere near that scented, if it's scented at all. So just wanna let you know that. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into the second part of this video, which is the tutorial. I'm gonna start off with the eyes then we'll do cheeks and lips and then make sure you hang in here to the end so that you can hear some important thoughts I have on the actual formulation of each of these products. Okay, so I did already apply my eyeshadow primer, which is the Milani eyeshadow primer, and I put a little bit of MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot over the top of that because I wanted a little extra coverage and brightness on the lid. However, you'll notice I have not applied foundation, and that is because I'm going to use some of the glitters in this palette, and there is fallout. So we're going to start off though with the E50 from Sigma and I'm going to use this cream shade. This is a really nice brightening, very pigmented shade and I find the shade, the color of it, the tone is actually pretty versatile. So it's brightening but it's not so pale that it makes your brow bone highlight too bright. All right, now we're gonna go in with the crease and um, I'm gonna do a combination. Oh, what do we wanna do today? I'll start off, I'll show you a little bit of this light pink shade and I'm using an A503 from Angie Hot and Flashy brush set. And I'm going to put this on the lid. So I did apply that Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot which will help these lighter colors stand out a little bit more, but you can see, I mean, barely, barely see that color. Um, you can build it just a little bit, but it does um, eventually give you a real soft wash of pink there. And I'm gonna stay with that same brush and I'm gonna go in now with this shade right here. This is probably one of my favorite shades it is more of a warm rose color. And I feel like this one you can really build up nicely, but by putting that lighter pink shade down first, it helps diffuse it so you don't have too much blending work to do. But you can see, I mean, we're <laughs> getting pretty close to my sweater color here, which is kind of what my goal was. 
Now switching to a smaller fluffy brush. This is the A502, also from Angie Hot and Flashy. I'm gonna to go to the next shade, which is the deepest shade in the palette. This is a really beautiful, kind of slightly berry toned brown, which is my preferred shade of brown. I feel like it works with all of the colors in this palette. And it just has that touch of berry, which I think keeps it from being too cool or too warm. So I'm just blending that up towards the outer corner there. And this one is pretty pigmented. Um, I do find it takes a little extra work to blend it. So that's why I made sure I started off with something there in the grease before adding this one. And then I'm gonna go in with a combination of the shade right next to it. So both of those colors together on the brush, and then I'm going around the edge there just to help further blend that. And then I'll bring it in just slightly. All right, we'll probably end up doing a little more blending later, but for now, let's go ahead and we're gonna add the lid shade. Now, before I actually go in with any of the shimmers in this palette, I am going to add a cream shadow stick as a base. These shadows in this palette definitely need a cream base. I'll explain more in a little bit, but I'm gonna use the By Terry Ombre Black Star Color Fix Cream Eyeshadow, and this is the shade Frozen Quartz. And I want this color to end up having a slight little bit of a pink hint. So that's why I chose this one. And this is such a great cream shadow. It glides on, you really just barely even have to tap to blend it in and it will set and stay all day. Okay, now we're gonna go back to our palette and I'm going to use this shade. You can see this one has probably the deepest crevice in it. This is the one I've been using the most from this palette for all the shimmers. So I really dug my finger in there to get off as much color as possible. And now I'm going to tap that on. And by having that cream base underneath, it just gives it a much more opaque finish and it brings out the shine and the shimmer a lot more. I did try doing the shadow wet without a cream base just to see if I could get the same result and I could not. <laughs> so this I have found is the easiest way to get the biggest impact with that shade. All right, now we're gonna add a little liner. I'm using the Urban Decay Demolition Pencil. Um, the color is Demolition. This is the 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil. It's just a matte brown shade. And I am going to work this into the roots of the lashes here as I go towards the inner corner. And then as I get about at the midpoint where my eye starts going down, this is where I like to go out to the corner and almost like you're just gonna draw straight across because my eyes have a slight downturn. This kind of helps fool your eye into thinking that they actually go up. <laughs> All right, and then for my easy quick fix so you don't have to be super precise with that. I'm gonna take the BK Beauty, this is the 204 brush, and I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of that dark brown shade and just tap that right on the edge of that liner. And it just also softens it and helps it not be as harsh, but it also disguises the line so it doesn't have to be super super perfect. And then I'll just wedge a little more of that brown shadow right into the corner there. 
On the lower lash line, I'm gonna do something a little softer. So I'm using the Sephora Retractable Waterproof Liner, and this is in Shimmer Taupe. And I'm going to bring this about, oh, let's see, halfway across, and then just kind of feather the edge of it so it ends up being about two-thirds of the way across the lower lash line. And I am trying to stay pretty close Kind of work that into the roots of the lashes. And now let's top it with another one of these shimmer shades. So let's add a little bit of this one. This looks like it's going to be like a peachy pink. And it is, but man, it is super, super sheer. So we'll just add a little bit of this over that liner and see if we can kind of get a little bit of it to show up right here. Not much, but okay. And then I'm gonna go in with a touch of a combination of these two matte shades in the outer corner, just right up against the lash line. I always do this, especially right here, because if my eyes water, even though that pencil is waterproof, this is just an added insurance to help it really set and stay in place better. Okay, so before I clean up under the eyes, um, I do have a little bit of some shimmer, but because I used that shadow stick, that really helped kind of keep the glitter in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up, and then we'll come back and do blush and lips. Now, as you can see, I'm looking pretty one-dimensional because I haven't applied any contour or bronzer so that you can see the true color of this blush. So it does have a pretty cool, pink tone to it, but there is like a duochrome shift. It's really interesting. And I think this probably in my mind would look a little better if you have cooler toned skin, but on my warm toned skin, I can get it to work, but you can see now how much glow and the duochrome shift, it's hard to describe, but maybe you can see it as the light hits it. So quite a lot of shimmer um, and a, a good amount of color with it as well. But as you build up the color, you're also going to be adding more glow and kind of that duochrome shift. So it is pretty and very different than anything else I can think of in my collection. But I have to be careful, like you can already see, it is starting to highlight texture right here. So that's something just to really be aware of. You're going to want to go in with a lighter hand, but therefore you're not gonna get quite as much color impact. So um, that's just kind of the, the give and take of this blush. So there you go lots and lots of glow from that blush. All right, now here's what the blush looks like after I've added a little bit of contour. I used the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow, and I just used the contour shade. So you can see that does help the overall color, add a little more color to the cheeks. And then what I like to do, because you can see, even though there's glow there, it's not really highlighted necessarily. So I'm going to go in with just a little bit of this Film Star Glow and put that right on the tops of the cheeks. And so it adds just a little more brightness. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of that on the inner corner of the eye to finish off this look. And then go back to our palette and I'm going to use a little bit of that shimmer shade we used on our lid and add a little bit of sparkle and brightness right there in the inner corner. Okay, now we're going to apply the final piece in this collection that I purchased and it is the Heartcore Lipstick. I love the packaging. <laughs> Uh, but this is what it looks like when you clean off the core. So this core is supposed to be hydrating and then you have the color around it. And I have the shade Never Grow Up. I've been wearing this with a lip liner, but I want to show it to you just 
straight on the lip so you can get the full color, at least how it translates on mine. So I did apply the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot around the edge, and now I'm going in with the lipstick. So you can see it does have quite a bit of shine. It's very emollient, but it also does pack some good color. And the more you add, the more shine you get. And then this is what it looks like after you apply. <laughs> so I just sometimes will wipe it off if I just, you know, want to get back to that clean core. But here is the color Never Grow Up. All right, so now that everything is done, my hair is done, let me give you now a close-up of this makeup. And overall, it is a look that I'm really pleased with. I think it's really pretty. It has that shimmer and shine on the lid. And I even like the pink color, even though normally I would add a little bit more of a deeper liner. But overall, I do love the finished look. So now let's get down though to the brass tacks and the nitty gritty on each of these products. And let me just tell you kind of my real thoughts on these products so you can make an informed purchase decision. Let's start off with the eyeshadow palette. All right, so as far as the formulation goes, you will probably have picked up on a few of these notes as I was applying, but overall, most of the mattes, there are a couple of exceptions, especially this one, but all of the rest pretty much perform well. They're very buildable and blendable. The deepest shade does take a little extra work to blend, I find, but you do get there. And overall, I think the color range is really pretty. Uh, however, this shade, I tried to use this the other day, even over a white base, a white liner, and it just came off looking almost just white, very chalk-like on me. So I just really struggled with that shade. And then the shade next to it, it looks like it's gonna have a real pretty green shift. So I also tried that over a white base and it just kind of looks, I mean, as the light hits it, you can kind of pick up a little bit of a green tone tint, but it's again, kind of like that sheer formulation that we have in here. And I just did not like how that translated on the eyes. Now this one, you saw I made that one work. Um, this one, again, I used this the other day. I even tried it wet and I just could not get much color to show up on my eyes. This one I've not even used on my eyes because it's just, again, kind of that very, very pale shade of lavender that it doesn't show up well on my skin tone. Now, that leads me to this bottom row. This is actually a really good performing shimmery shade. I didn't use this today. It has more of a satin finish. It's not all out metallic. It doesn't have huge chunky gl glitter particles, so it is a really pretty shade. And then this one. Okay, this is where I really need to caution you because the first time I used this palette, I went right to that shade because just look at this. It is so beautiful. I know you've already, already seen the swatches, but it has more of a pink base to it. It has a good amount of metallic kind of finish and I just loved it. And I got done with my look and my eyes were a little bit irritated. I thought, well, maybe it's kind of some of the flakiness from the glitter of these shades. But I thought, you know, I didn't do what I normally do. Let's look at the back of the palette where it has all the ingredients in this tiny print. And oh dear, I thought, uh-oh, I didn't think to look. It says ethereal eyeshadow and pressed pigment palette. That set off that warning bell. So I looked in the tiny print and it says think pink use on the cheeks only. I thought, oh no. So what that means is that that shade is not approved for use on the eyes in the United States by the FDA. Typically that means they've added a colorant like red number 28 or something. So I thought it was this shade. It's not, it's this shade which makes me a little extra scared because this is a very glittery shade and I couldn't see any colorant additives in this one that weren't allowed. So that makes me wonder 
if the glitter particles that they use in here are not eye safe. So that automatically makes me avoid this shade. But then I'm looking at this shade going, that is not something I am going to be wearing on my cheeks at all. There's lots of glitter in there. So therefore that shade for me personally is unusable. And I feel like that is the most beautiful shade in this whole palette. And I loved the color story. It's just, I really feel like this is lacking pigmentation. Now, interestingly enough, the other day, all of a sudden, I thought of another palette that reminded me of this one, the color story, but I knew it was a much better performer. And I thought, oh my goodness the Huda Beauty Retrograde Palette, Mercury Retrograde Palette. I mean, look at this palette. I mean, do you see this? We've got that kind of bright turquoise. Okay, let me put them up side by side. And I thought, huh, I think somebody at Too Faced drew a lot of inspiration from this Huda Beauty Retrograde Palette. And I have to say, these perform 10 times better than the Too Faced ones. Uh, the shimmers in here are, I mean, like this one, one swipe. And I mean, it is a metallic finish. Um, even this kind of uh, more muted uh, lavender shade. I mean, you can see it's light, but it's not chalky looking. Let's look at this one. Same thing with this. Do you see how much more color is in there than white? I know there's white mixed in with the color, but let's go now with the Too Faced one. And you can see the Too Faced one just has so much white that you're not getting that beautiful turquoise shade we're expecting when we look at that shade in the palette. Now this one, you can see this berry shade is slightly deeper than the bright pink in this one, but overall, I mean, we've got the peach, the pink. I mean, we even have a cream shade. We've got shimmer shades, and this one actually has a few more shades. So this one has 18 shades versus 14, and at this moment of filming this video, this is on sale at Sephora for uh, almost half price. So it's, I think, around $33. And this is at Sephora 39. So if I were you and you were looking for a colorful palette and you were interested in this palette from Too Faced, I would recommend looking at the Huda Beauty one instead. Now onto the blush shade. Now, similarly, this, I just feel like it's just not my color. Um, I love the pink. The pink is my color, but it's that duochrome shift in there. Like you can almost see when I turn it here, it just does some crazy things. And maybe that is exactly what you love. And so if you're somebody who loves multi-dimensional color on your cheeks with a lot of glow, then you might really love this. This one I will continue to use, but I'm going to use it more sparingly as kind of a blush topper because as I mentioned, I feel like this does highlight texture and I have to build up quite a lot of it and therefore a lot of sheen in order to get that really good color payoff. And last but not least, the lip product, the Hardcore Lipstick. I love this. I think the scent of it is really nice. I love fruity scents, you know that about me. And so, and the formulation, it just feels so good on the lips. And I've had this on for a little while and it doesn't bleed, at least so far, um, even without a lip liner. I did use the Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot, but you can see it really did give a good amount of color and shine. So out of this collection, my top pick would be these lipsticks and it, they do come in several different shades. So if you were thinking like me, oh no, it's sold out, it must be spectacular, I gotta get my hands on it. Hopefully the thoughts and information I shared with you today will help you make a good decision of whether this palette, this blush, these lipsticks, whether they are right for you. Thank you as always so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.